Hey everyone, welcome back to Blake's Lee Acres. <clears throat> I'm Joe. Just uh, moving cow pasture today. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm taking them off of. Still got a lot of, lot of grass in here left off. Um, this little patch down here is really thick. They chewed it off. Up on top of the hill, uh, a little bit shorter. Um, so I decided I was going to move them off of this and leave what I can. Um, the next pass I'm putting them in is a little bit taller than this stuff right here. That is close to hip high. I'm going to that little patch after I get them off this next patch. It'll probably be just a day or so right there maybe two <clears throat> just for so they can clean it up um, that was part of that other field I just took them off but the neighbor had his pond cleaned out uh, so I fenced it off a little bit different than I did last time um, that was my second rotation this year off that piece <clears throat> a good chunk of that grass and there is uh, it's called the canary reed grass. It grows super fast, which is great for me. It's not as nutritious as like Timothy or orchard grass or something like that, but um, because my pastures aren't that great, these ones that have this canary reed grass in them is actually a really good thing for me because it produces more forage. Um, produces more forage for me. So, uh, this rotational grazing system I've been doing, it's been working out pretty good. Um, pastures definitely need a lot of work yet. Like this one has been for, um, see some red clover coming up in there. Got some tree foil, good grasses. There's still a lot of weeds in here. You can see the goldenrod popping up, um, out. On the other side of that ditch, out in that field, all the way down and around, that's another big stand of that uh, canary reed grass. Um, but what I've been doing the last couple grazing seasons is I graze the cows through and mow it off after they, as, as soon as I can, after they come off of it to try to knock back some of the goldenrod. Um, it's still coming in pretty thick, but uh, I have noticed a big uh, change in the species that's starting to pull, come up, come in. I'm hoping next season I can start doing a little bit more one or two day moves on these pastures. I think getting them in a smaller area, moving them more frequent is going to do uh, my neighbor's farm a tremendous amount of good and uh, start knocking some of this goldenrod out. You can see I've grazed this twice now and they were in here a little too long. Goldenrod, there's a lot of goldenrod in here. Um, that's how this whole hilltop is. Uh, I got to run the idea by him of uh, bale grazing up on top of this hill this winter. Um, I gotta figure it out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get water over here or not all winter, or at least in the fall and stuff. Uh, once I run out of pasture, I'd really like to bale graze this, if at all possible. Uh, start bringing in some more nutrients and covering up some of these bare spots and putting a lot of pressure on this these goldenrod plants. Uh, by doing that, um, but the, it's been really nice this year because, uh, like I said in previous videos, last year was my um, first year grazing my neighbor's farm here. Um, a little skeptical and stuff, but we built a good relationship, and. It's just been slowly growing. He keeps giving me more and more. He gave me a good chunk. Um, 
on my first rotation through he gave me a, a really nice chunk he actually mowed the a path around it so i could get fence around it and that's what they just came off of that piece that they just came off i showed you uh and this piece i'm walking through right now i just showed you with goldenrod that was all part of that piece i started with just this top pretty much from that T post right there kind of looped around the top here and right up to the tree line over to where those weed, taller weeds start. Um, that's what I started with and then he gave me this piece down below that I showed before with the canary reed grass last year. I grazed that once last year. I grazed the top two pieces only twice last year. Um, and then I ran out and I didn't have any grass. Um, so I'm hoping this year is going to be a little bit different. I'm hoping he, uh, I can uh, graze straight through deer season without bothering his hunting. And that would be awesome because that if, if my calculations are right in the way it's going, I should be able to graze at least till middle of October. Um, still not great, but it's way better than last year. I think I grazed till the end of August last year and then I ran out of grass completely. Um, so I'm not gonna complain. I'm actually, the, this piece I'm going into right now is new. I've never grazed this. Um, it's probably, what I fenced off today, there's probably acre or so give or take um, but it is thick there's there's a good amount of weeds in there uh, but there's also a good amount of grasses in there so my hopes is I can get uh, at least a week maybe two weeks of rotation out of this and then I'll be going over in this other part here um, I'm gonna try doing smaller rotational grazing in that piece and that should give me two weeks out of that and then if I can do one more rotation um, it'll get me right up to at least October anyway um, but that'll be getting me a lot closer than I was last year and I hope to keep just keep continuing this cycle building these pastures up uh, grazing mowing if I have to um, just doing what I got to do uh, up on my farm my pastures are still kind of you know they're not that great either the upper field that i'm um, running chicken tractors through though that's turning out really really well uh, i think that's going to be really nice by fall with all the fertilizer i've been putting on it and i'm just going to keep continuing to do that um yeah, you can see how thick this is in here uh, like I said, a lot of weeds. I have found that cows love that wild parsnip. Stuff makes you blister up like crazy, and I think I touched some, I'll probably blister up again. But the cows just strip that off. The cows just strip that right down to the stalk and the seed head. Um, they'll actually eat the stem when it's young. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to keep continuing this. There's one more piece on this farm that I haven't got yet. Um... But the way it looks, I, there's probably a good chance that I might end up with it. It's probably another uh, couple acres down in there. This is this is probably an acre and a half. That's probably another acre and a half. But um, every square foot counts when you're doing your rotational grazing. Um, so, yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, girls. All right, I got the cows down in that new section. Uh, took them a little bit because they were going through some decent grass. I put a fence line down in between so they didn't get into the other stuff that's been rested. 
because uh, I know I wouldn't have got them out of there. Um, but I did get them down there, which isn't bad. The only one that was left up here is Red's calf, so hopefully she calls her down. We'll see. But uh, I ended up popping over here to the butcher shop and started working on some more stuff over here. Um, if you guys could, like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, ring the notifications bell. Um, and like always, we appreciate the viewers we've got.